Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. It may be time for kids to get the vaccine. I'm Larry Sproul, and I'll tell you how one local pharmacy is helping parents get a head start on booking an appointment. A COVID shot for kids as oh. young as 12 could be just weeks away. And in some places, parents already have the option of pre-booking appointments. Also, the semiconductor chip shortage continues to hinder auto production. We've got to look at some new plant closures and how the car companies are trying to cope. A whistleblower lawsuit from the top cop in E-Course, and now he's out of a job. Tonight, there are big questions about the big money his replacement is getting. We begin tonight with a local Ford Defenders exclusive. The public safety director is fired in the city of E-Course. And director Joseph Thomas had no idea until we contacted his attorney. Local 4 Defender Sean Lay live with what we've uncovered. Sean, uh, Thomas was initially hired because of a very specific skill that he had demonstrated in the past, right? Absolutely, Joseph Thomas, now former director. He was hired on to find corruption. He says he found it in E-Course. He says he reported it. There are now three investigations into it. He was fired last night. In a public meeting, his replacement was hired, but with a secret deal kept from the public secret until now. Listen closely to this audio provided to the local four defenders from last night's E-Course City Council meeting. What you are about to hear is City Council voting to oust its public safety director without his knowledge and install someone else as the E-Course top cop. The council hereby appoints Deputy Director Narva Bruno as the interim Director of Public Safety. Narda Bruno is the new Director of Public Safety. Public Safety Director Dr. Joseph Thomas Jr. was let go. Thomas has a whistleblower lawsuit against the city of Ecorse. His specialty in public safety is uncovering corruption. Thomas says he found alleged corruption within the police and city government, and he says he faced retaliation for doing the job he was brought in to do. Next, it's no secret around Ecor City Hall when this confidentiality agreement was printed out. New Chief Narda Bruno filed a discrimination complaint against Ecorse, and tonight's sources are telling us what was not made public that her agreement states that she gets the $90,000 a year job as chief and a $300,000 settlement. Leonard Mungo, attorney for fired Chief Dr. Joseph Thomas, says Thomas did not know. He was replaced until Mungo called him this afternoon. Absolutely no idea. He was on vacation. He was out of town. It was the whistleblowing first and then the termination. And we got to keep that in mind. We can't lose that context. That's the narrative here. That's the beginning narrative and that's the end narrative. In fact, the defenders have learned the city of Eagle Course hasn't even told former uh, Director Thomas that he has been let go. No response to the defenders from the mayor, city administrator or city attorney. I did speak to the brand new chief on her first day on the job. She said she would get back to me. Then she told her staff she's leaving for vacation on her first day on the job and she'll be back on May the 17th. We're live tonight. Sean Lay, Local 4 Defenders. Got it. All right, Sean. Let's turn our attention now to the coronavirus. Key numbers have dropped dramatically from the surge levels, but Michigan still leads the country in the number of new cases. The state reports 2,589 new cases and 42 additional deaths today. Cases are down 71 percent and hospitalizations are down 31 percent from two weeks ago. Governor Whitmer tells Local 4 the state will evaluate where we stand if we don't reach her goal of 70% vaccination rate. The governor has tied reopening measures to vaccination levels. Right now, Michigan's vaccination rate is just over 50%. Some optimism today from the head of the CDC. Dr. Rochelle Walensky says a new CDC study projects the country will be through the worst of the pandemic by July. In good news, the models projected a sharp decline in cases by July 2021 and an even faster decline if more people get vaccinated sooner. The results remind us that we have the path out of this and models once projecting really grim news now offer reasons to be quite hopeful for what the summer may bring. 
Now, under the most optimistic scenario, by July, new weekly national cases could drop below 50,000, hospitalizations to fewer than 1,000, and deaths down to as low as 200. That would be quite a change. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of anticipation right now surrounding COVID vaccination of children. Approval for a shot of, for kids as young as 12 is expected soon. So what can parents do to prepare? Larry Spruill has that part of the story. For weeks now, we have been focused on getting the shots into the arms of adults. Now health experts are getting ready to focus on getting those vaccines to kids. I talked to one local pharmacy who is allowing parents to book those appointments for when that time comes. Raina Kadu with Dearborn Pharmacy and Apothecary says they have been going nonstop since the pandemic started. And now with the vaccine, that's actually been the most exciting uh, chapter during this pandemic. Things continue to be busy as people want the vaccine and although they don't have much time for leisure, they're OK with that. We are able to service the community and help protect uh, our fellow citizens. And now they're getting ready to help out our younger citizens. They're gearing up to give kids the shot if and when approved. It's following the FDA closely and the CDC, and we're really optimistic that um, we're hoping that next week it will get approved and children can start getting their vaccines. We have come up with uh, a pre-booking system uh, and uh, very uh, simple to use, user friendly. And within hours, they're all booked. Pretty much like a pre booking system right now. And we booked the solid for all of May and half of June within 12 hours. The pharmacy is waiting for the final approval, but says they will open up more slots soon. I feel like the closer we can get our children vaccinated, the better overall for the community. And if you want to take a look at getting your kids an appointment for that vaccine, you can. The information is on our website. Click on Detroit.com. Larry Spruill, Local 4. Okay, Larry, let's uh, talk about our day off from the rain here. Yeah, Ben's got to look at our weather, which includes a bit of a warming trend here, Ben. Yes, there is technically a warming trend in that seven day forecast, so we'll, we'll tease ahead to that. But the uh, rain took a little halftime break today, uh, and the second half is coming in here Thursday and Friday. But downtown Detroit, this has been an interesting shot here in the last couple hours. We've been getting breaks of sunshine, mostly behind the camera, and it's making those clouds look a little bit more ominous at times than they actually are. Numbers are in the mid 50s. Some of those have gone up to 57 out in Ann Arbor in the west zone, where you've seen just a little bit more sunshine. Port Huron, obviously, the clouds still having an effect there at 46. The weather impacts over the next four days. Highest are going to be Thursday and Friday when we go to moderate impacts because of the rain chances. Good chunks of those days are going to be wet. Not so much the weekend, though. It looks like it's going to be mainly dry, although technically there are still rain chances on Mother's Day. So we'll talk about that coming up. You can get a sneak peek at uh, what to expect for mom on Sunday in the local forecasters app. Your 10 day forecast is where to find it, and it is free in your app store by searching WDIV. Guys. Okay, Ben, the computer chip shortage continues to plague the auto industry. It is forcing more plant closures, particularly for Ford. Our business editor, Rob Maloney, has been following this crisis from the start. He's live tonight with the latest. Rod. Yeah, Devin, we're, it looks like we're getting into the teeth of this crisis here as uh, Ford put out its schedule today. And, of course, GM and Stellantis also have some issues. And what they're saying is this is costly, but they're getting by as best they can. Here's the new schedule. Ford saying the weeks between May 17th and the 24th, the Michigan Assembly plant in Wayne, which builds the Ranger, will join Flat Rock Assembly, where they make the Mustang and the Continental, and Kansas City Assembly, where they build F-150s and transits with already announced chip shortage closures. Between June 7th and 14th, the Kentucky truck plant, where they build the Super Duty pickups, will close. Over at Stellantis, they're continuing limited production at Jefferson North Assembly in Detroit. And GM is updating its current closures by adding the Lansing Grand River Assembly plant to its May 10th to June 28th closures. Cami Assembly in Ontario is already closed. The Fairfax, Kansas Assembly plant, where they build the Malibu and the Cadillac XT4, will close through July 5th. 
Today, GM CEO Mary Barra addressed the overall situation on CNBC. And we're really focused on protecting our highest demand uh, vehicles and those that we're constrained to, to build more. So full-size trucks, full-size SUVs are electric vehicle products. And it's uh, something that gives us confidence. And it's really crimping vehicle availability and driving prices sky high, says Guidehouse Analytics analyst Sam Abel Samit. People are going to be paying more for vehicles at least through the remainder of this year and probably well into 2022 because there's more demand than there is inventory from every manufacturer. So discounts are being eliminated. And here's the other thing, if you want to go to a used car, you're going to have a problem as well, because now we're finding out that the rental companies, because they're starting to see more travel, need vehicles for their fleets. They can't find new ones, so they're buying used at the auctions. And so if you want to get a used car now, you're going to expect to pay a much higher price as well. That's the very sad news of all of this sort of trickling down to the customer. Back to you. Sure is, Rod, and I know this changes by the week, but what's the latest guess on how long for this problem to fully dissipate? Well, now they're talking it's going to end, you know, probably end of the year, first quarter next year, uh, where we'll start to see the production back up to where it needs to be. A long slog ahead. All right, Rod. As we talk automakers, GM just reported a $3.3 billion first quarter net profit despite the semiconductor shortage. Uh, but as we just heard from CEO Mary Barra, the company still expects to have a strong first half. Meantime, Stellantis said revenue increased 14% to $44.4 billion in the first quarter of 2021. Global shipments increased 12% despite the chip shortage. Stellantis says they're confident that higher prices and robust demand will help deliver a strong performance overall this year. Police on the lookout tonight for the man accused of using a knife to rob a Walgreens in Dearborn Heights. It happened around one this morning at Walgreens at the corner of Telegraph and Van Bourne. Police say the man entered the store, approached the front counter and grabbed the cashier. They say he put a knife to her neck and forced her to open the register. No word on what he got away with, but he was last seen in a blue or black Ford Escape. When people start giving back to their communities, they sometimes get hooked. Ahead, uh, how one man's 10-year journey of helping others is getting a new focus. Plus, it wasn't poison after all. The DNR reveals what killed a group of swans in Oakland County. That's next.